What if a friend suggested downloading an indie game from a service you heard of? Would you go through with it? When you think of downloading a game to your computer, two platforms most likely come to mind, Steam and GOG. This is because they provide peace of mind, safety, and trust in the company's service and their reputation. GOG, standing for Good Old Games from Project Red, is one of my favorites. They keep old games alive by making them playable in the present, and they do so at a low cost. Steam has a large selection of games, including indie games. Some people have problems with their relationship with indie developers. However, Steam is to indie developers what Barnes & Nobles is to indie novelists. It's simply the platform to be on. But what if the services wasn't Steam or GOG, but rather a website called Itch.io or Godomai? Would you still trust it? Gotham games can be played online without downloading. However, as far as I know, you can't buy and download the game. It must be played online. Itch.io is a complete marketplace that has free games, games for sale, game development assets, bundle deals, and much more. Both are fantastic places to play indie games and meet indie developers. Let's take a look at some safety elements side by side. So here we go, guys. We have both of the websites in front of us, itch.io and gotem.io. Some people call it itch.io, you can call it gotemo, or <laughs> no, we're gonna do that. In any case, the first thing I'm gonna look for is the lock symbol up in the URL. We see that itch.io has it as well as gotem.io. If you were to click on the lock symbol, you would see something like this. The connection is secure, and it has information about if your passwords or credit cards are being used, that it's private when coming through this site, which is great. Both of these websites have communities, which I'm not gonna show right now for the sake of time. If you look all the way at the bottom of the page on itch.io, you're gonna find your privacy policy, which is very important. If you look over on Gotham and down the left column, we're gonna click on privacy and you see that there is also a privacy statement. Let's go back to the front screen. Now, some open thoughts about both of these websites. When it comes to Gotham, the thing that I like about it is that you can play the games right inside of the browser. So if you have a friend that's a little uneasy easy about downloading something, then you can direct them to Gotham and they can play the games and get them exposed to indie games right inside of their browser, nothing to download. At the same time, that is also the caveat with me when it comes to Gotham, because you can't download the games onto your personal computer when you purchase them or you can't purchase them and download them. So you have to have an internet connection if you're gonna play the games on Gotham, even if you're underneath the premium. Now, don't get hung up on the whole premium subscription service thing. There are some games that are behind that wall, but there are a ton of games on there that you you can play for free right inside of the browser and that's an awesome thing. However, over on itch.io, it's a different type of beast here. Here, you can download these games, you can download the assets. Matter of fact, itch.io is a complete marketplace where Gotham is not. Now, that's not a knock on Gotham. I'm just saying that itch.io is a different type of beast. If we were to click on the game assets on itch.io, you see right here, you got free, on sale, pay, uh, pay less than five, pay less than 15. But you have a wide variety of other assets, tools, and just different types of entertainment that you can get into right here here on itch.io, it's a complete marketplace. Now, my only caveat with itch.io is that anybody can upload to this service. I have to imagine that itch.io has some sort of protections in place, but you have to do your due diligence. Make sure that you are careful about what you download, and that is from anywhere, really. Itch.io is pretty dang on awesome, and Gotham.io is pretty dang awesome. But if you're interested in having your own little bit of a sandbox that you could build for yourself to download things into and see how they act before you put them onto your regular computer, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, in order to create our sandbox, we're gonna need two applications. One is VirtualBox, the other one is the Windows 10 installation media, which will create our ISO image for our virtual computer. If you don't want to use Windows, you can use Linux, Linux Mint being one of my favorite distributions that are out there. But in this video, I will be using Linux. I mean, Windows. <laughs> On VirtualBox, you wanna click on Windows Host. This will download the application to your downloads folder. Over on Windows, you wanna click on Download, and that will download the creation tool to your downloads folder. 
Currently, you see three icons on your screen, virtual box installation, a folder that I created to hold my ISO image and the tool that's going to be used to create the ISO image. We're going to double click that and start there. Once you double click that, you will see this screen. You want to click on accept. You want to make sure that you pick the second option and click next. Next, we're going to leave this exactly as it is and click next. Then we're going to make sure that the second option ISO is selected and click next. Once you do that, you'll be able to navigate to whatever folder you want to, to create your ISO image. In mine, I created a folder called OSISO and that's where I'll be creating my ISO image. You want to click on save. After that, you will see the progress screen and everything will be created for you. And the ISO image will be created into the folder that you picked. You will eventually get to this screen and you will click on finish. Here I want to show you that the ISO image that I just created is inside of the folder OSISO and this is the image. Next we're going to create our virtual computer. We're going to go ahead and double click on the virtual box application. The installation will begin. You're just going to click next. You're going to leave everything as is and click next. You're going to click yes. You're going to click yes. You're going to click install and then finish. Once you do that, you will see this screen. You're simply going to go to new and click it. Once you click it, you will see this screen here. You will be able to name your virtual computer. I name mine's my sandbox. Next, you're going to click on ISO image. You see where it has not selected. You're going to hit the down pointing arrow. You will see the word other, and then you're going to click on other. Once you click other, you'll be able to navigate to wherever your ISO image was created. Once you select your ISO image, you're going to click on open. Once you click open, you will see now that the ISO image has a path. This will gray out. We want to put a check mark next to skip unattended installation and click on next. Now we can choose how much RAM our virtual computer will be allowed to use. Do not go past the green. Here I chose 5,000. The processor is the same way. Do not go past the green. Here my virtual computer will have four processors. You want to leave this unchecked and click next. Here we're creating our hard drive. You want to leave this as is and click next. Here you can look over your settings. Go ahead and click finish. Now you'll see this screen. You'll see that your virtual computer is underneath the preview screen and whatever you named it. Here is your virtual computer. The next thing we need to do is click on settings. Once you click settings, go down the left column and choose network. Make sure that you're underneath adapter one underneath enable network adapter. You want to change attached to, to not attached, or you can just remove the check mark. It'll look something like this here. You see that it is not attached, but again, you could just remove this check mark. Once you're satisfied, go ahead and hit OK, then hit the start button to start your virtual computer. Once you hit start, you will see this screen. The operating system is now being installed into your virtual computer. You will eventually see this screen and you will be installing windows onto this computer, just like you were installing onto a physical computer. You will go ahead and click install. Once you get to this screen, you want to choose. I do not have a product key. You will then see this screen. You want to go ahead and choose windows 10 home. At least that's what I did. If you happen to see this screen, this means that you did not disable the network adapter like I showed you before, where you would hit setting, go underneath network and make sure that you took away the check mark or change the setting to not attached. If you see this screen, what you should see is a screen that says, I do not have an internet connection. You want to choose. I do not have an internet connection and go ahead and move on with your installation. At some point you will see this screen. Do not hit any key. It just means that your ISO image is connected to your virtual computer. Just let it go and it will move on. Once you get here, we want to go ahead and click the windows icon and click shut down to turn off your virtual computer. Once your virtual computer is shut down, you will go back to the front screen. When you're on the front screen, go back to settings, click that, go down the left column, go to network, and you will see underneath adapter one that you have it not attached as I showed you before, or this check mark is gone. You want to change this back to the way it was. So it should look like this where there is a check mark on enable adapter and the attached to says not. Once that is complete, you want to go ahead and hit OK and close it out. Once that is complete, you will go ahead and start your virtual computer just like you did before by clicking on start. In the interest of time, I went on ahead and downloaded Google Chrome onto this virtual computer. Your virtual computer now has access to the internet because you re-enabled the network adapter. I went on ahead and navigated to itch so that you could see it on your screen. Let's go ahead and click on game assets. Let's look down through the game assets and let's choose this one right here. 
Once you're there, you can go ahead and hit download now. Once you see this screen, if you so choose, you can throw a couple dollars towards the developers of which I highly encourage. But for this video right now, we're just gonna click on the no thanks, take me to the downloads. Once you're here, you would simply go ahead and click on the download and it will download to your computer. In the interest of time, I went on ahead and downloaded it. This is the file that you will get, which is a zipped file. I went on ahead and extracted it and this is the file here. You can open up textures and you can see that the textures are here. Now remember, this sandbox has no virus protection, but you can add virus protection to it. The reason that I don't put virus protection on this is because I wanna see if any of the files start making this virtual computer act crazy. This is something that I hope and will encourage or make other people feel safe, and hopefully more people will go ahead over to itch.io or Gotham and use their services as well. So I hope that you guys like this video. If you deem me worthy, please give me a like and a subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.